There's history here. And here. There's history there. History is everywhere. I am on the Jackson, uh, Jackson County Genealogical Library's quilt committee. And uh, one of the, um, well, a little background. When the Jacksonville Museum quilters had to leave their longtime location, they had to get rid of some quilts. They, had, they didn't have storage enough for all their quilts. And so they donated about 12 of them to the genealogy library. One of those quilts was this particular one that we're going to talk about today. And the, the background on it, um, Helen Poor made the quilt. She went to an uh, antiques show at the Horton Plaza. And here was this pile of 31 signed blocks. Well, as a quilter, and I'm, we, we, we have a, a weakness. We can't stand to have unfinished quilts laying around. I mean, we all have dozens of them. But we just, just hate the thought that says all the work that went into this beautiful little blocks are sitting there not complete, you know. And so and Helen is a quilter. And so she looked at those blocks, and she just couldn't stand it. And so she bought them. And she put the quilt together. <clears throat> and if you go up and look at it later, you'll see some wonderful hand quilting. She just did a really nice job. But she didn't know anything about those people. And there's 31 blocks. Actually, there's one on the back. It didn't fit into her quilt, and so she, it's on the back. And she didn't know who they were. Didn't matter. She liked the blocks. So she made the quilt. She took it to the Jacksonville Museum quilters when they were still doing their annual quilt show which they don't do anymore, which makes most quilters just really cry. And um, she said, hey, would you mind displaying this and see if anybody can recognize any of these names? I, I don't know who these people are. And so they showed it at the 2010 quilt show. This quilt was displayed with a sign on it saying, do you know who these people are? And uh, <clears throat> nobody did. <laughs> and and the, the Jacksonville Quilters Show usually pulls in, what, 100, 500, 1,000 people over the, over the time they've had their show. And so that's a lot of people to look at this quilt and not know anybody, you know. And so anyway, so when, when they donated the quilt, she donated it here to the library. And they asked, well, can you figure out who these people are? I mean, you're genealogists. This is what you do, right? And well, <clears throat> I volunteered. <laughs> then I, I grabbed my friend Betty and I said, "Okay, we're going. We're going to do this." And uh, so we started. But the key to finding out who these people were, for us at least, was the cemetery. And we, I don't know how many of you are genealogists, but headstones can have an awful lot of good information if you just get out there and look. Well, just before I came here, I had worked with the Jacksonville Boosters, and we had done an inventory of the Jacksonville Cemetery. And if you've never been to the cemetery, it's a really cool cemetery. It has a lot of this, that's, the, that's one picture of it there. It has just a lot of really fun headstones. They're not all those flat ones that you have to see at all the modern ones. You, you, have, you have a lot of really old ones. And it goes back to 1859. So it's one of the most, the oldest cemeteries in Jackson, in, in the state of Oregon. Anyway. Now, why do you want to know what's in the cemetery? Well, let's see. There's a murder victim. This is in the Jacksonville Cemetery, of course. He was renting a house, and the man wouldn't move. And so he went down with a gun and said, you're going to move? And he said, no, he wasn't. And so rifles came out, and people shot, and James Mankin died. He's in the Jacksonville Cemetery. 
Right up the hill from him is the Bodhi Monument, the Bodhi family. All the males were killed in the start of the war, the Modoc Indian War, in 1872. They're all there in Jacksonville Cemetery. There's stories there, lots of stories. This young person was only one year, six months old, 21 days. And also, this is one of the first monuments that the Friends of the Jackson, Historic Jacksonville Cemetery repaired. This one laid flat on the, on the ground for years. One of, the first, their, one of their first jobs was to put this stone back up. They've done a lot since then. Anyway, so, so here's our puzzle. Who, who is on this, who are these people? There's 30 of them. Why are they there? They're all dated between 1932 and 1940, which is helpful, but not all that much. So of course we came to our handy dandy genealogical society. Okay, what, what do we know? Helen made the quilt. She used an interlocking heart design, which you'll see when you go up and take a look at the hand quilting. I mean, she did a really, really nice job. So that, okay, I said all that stuff already, sorry. Okay, the first one that looked like it might be helpful, the lady signed it Mrs. H.J. Cousins. Well, happily, Cousins is a not Smith, Jones, <coughs> Robinson, it, you know, it's a name that you can maybe find a few of instead of thousands. So we thought, okay. Well, as, as in the 1930s, it was very common for women to use their husband's initials. They didn't very seldom use their own initials when they wrote their name out. So I assumed it was her husband's name. But was he a Harry or a Harold or what, what was his name? So I went to find a grave, nothing. Family search, no Mrs. H.J. Cousins. Well, fiddle. So on the same quilt is one with Bertha Cousins. Are they related? So we did family search, and there was Bertha. And it listed her mother as Hattie J. Cousins. She used her own initials. <laughs> so that, and her, her birth date coincided with the one that's on the quilt. Because if you do, you know, this one on the quilt, she says she was born in 1956, 1856. And Hattie J was born in 1856. So, where were the cousins? Well, then I could go to find a grave and good old Hattie and her daughter Bertha were buried in Johnson County, Texas. Grandview, their Bertha, her mother, and her father are all in the same headstone. So, is that a clue to who all the rest of them were? There she is, Bertha and Hattie. Okay, so who else is there? Well, what, you know, where is Johnson County? And I, I don't know about the rest of you, but Texas is a very big state. <laughs> and Johnson County isn't, I don't think, right up there with those that are all known like Dallas and all the rest of the places. And so I obviously had to <clears throat> look up Johnson County. And I found, it's considered part of the, the Dallas-Fort Worth com metro, metro complex, Metroplex, what they call it. So then I went a little farther and got into, John and there's Johnson County. And I even put a lovely little yellow arrow there so you know where Grandview is at. The center of the county, obviously, is Claiborne. And Claiborne put together this wonderful book up here on the table, put it out in 1997. And it's uh, from their Historical Society and Genealogy Society. And they combined all the stories for the county in this book. 880 some odd pages. 
lots of pictures, though. And their index, however, is by last name only. So if you're looking up Julie Smith, you got to look at about three pages of Smiths, <laughs> which is very frustrating when you're trying to pin down Julie. But anyway, that's, that's a minor difficulty. The book is, is a treasure if you're into Johnson County. OK, so there's the two main Grandview Cemetery and, and, and Grandview. And one of them has an index, which genealogists love indexes because they're all nice and alphabetical and all this stuff. This one was not alphabetical. This one is by grave site. Well, the plus of that, of course, is that with the grave site, I mean, with, it gives you associ family associations, who's in the plot. And so it, sometimes you can make some connections that you'd never make if it, with an alphabetical list. And it, it really makes a difference when you're trying to, when you don't know anything. <laughs> and of course, here's our Maggie, Mar Margie, Margie, Margie Elliot. <gasps> and there's Margie. So finally, I had, at least I knew I was kind of in the right neighborhood, because that was, that was three of them from the quilt from Grandview. She was buried very near Eugenia Carruthers, who just happens to be her grandmother. And you know that from looking at the census records. The 1930 census, there was Maggie, or Margie, and right next to, there was her, her grandmother, Eugenia. Eugenia isn't on here, I don't believe. Don't remember Eugenia. There's an Una, but I don't think that's short for Eugenia. OK. Um, then we go to the Bowles, obviously. Well, maybe not obviously, but husband and wife. Find, found them. After, they're buried next to each other. And one of the things you notice is the handwriting how similar the handwriting is. And they're embroidered in the same color. Now, why she didn't do the dates the same, I don't know. And I don't know the significance of the date, whether it was maybe their anniversary date. Then, uh, you know, that doesn't show up on headstones usually. <laughs> OK. And those headstones, there's their headstone. So we tied. Um, I think, no, I think the full dates are on there. But they, again, they wouldn't have an anniversary date or. Right, but I was just wondering yeah. what the range were. I can't I, 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 it, and the lighting on that particular, it came from Find a Grave. And their <clears throat> photography is wonderful to have, but sometimes not wonderful. And again, notice the similarity in the writing and the, and the stitching. So probably those two maybe go together. Uh, I did find Frances. And uh, she is living on the same street as Myra and Andy. Odd, Andy, yes. And Myra was a laird. Her maiden name was Laird. And the Lairds came in 1877. Her grandfather came in 1877. I found that in my handy dandy Johnson County book. He, said, he settled one mile north of Grandview in 1877. But looking at the handwriting kind of helps make some connections too. You know, you, you, you can't just look. They're just the last names. You gotta, you, you gotta check it all out. Then there's Wanda. And bless Wanda's family, they put her maiden name on her headstone. Thank you. <laughs> it makes genealogy work so much easier when they, when they give those little clues on the headstones. Um, otherwise, Brown as a last name is just a real challenge to try and pin down one Wanda Brown.
And there's Winnell. And there was not one Winnell thrift in Texas. We went through every census from 1900 to 1940, and there was no thrifts. I don't know where thrift comes up from, but there is a Winnell Laird. And she's down there, and they lived, the Morgan and Julia Laird lived just down the street from Ardo. I, I don't, I, I drove? I, I drove. <clears throat> and a Winnell married an Idro. So is that the right Winnell? And of course, if you look at the census records, Winnell shows up frequently, but spelled differently each time. So you can't count on that. You know, I mean, I'm sorry, headstones are not gospel. They uh, <clears throat> are very helpful, but not always exactly right. And then there's Daisy. And Young is another one of those names that, oh, oh my gosh, you know, where, where do those come from? The only thing I found out about Winnell is I found her in the 1930 census. If she was indeed born in 1909, she got married between 1920 and 1930 because her child's only a year old and she's a widow. No idea who her husband was. You know, she doesn't, she, she, she fits, she's in the gap. And, and there's no, I even looked up newspaper coverage to see if maybe there's a wedding announcement or something like that for her. Nothing. So I don't know who her husband was. She has a child, so she apparently was married. But interestingly enough, she lived just down the street from um, two other people that are on the quilt. Nothing showed. Yeah. Although I was looking at Genealogy Bank, <coughs> excuse me, and Genealogy Bank does not you, uh, does not let's see has not indexed the Grandview newspaper. Yeah. So maybe if I had a, a Grandview newspaper to look at, that'd be different. And then there's Betty. Absolutely nothing on Betty. Do not know where Betty is. There's um, another, Jean Grissom, same name. And the daughter is Betty, a, a sibling, a cousin, dead. She didn't show up in the newspapers, she didn't show up in the censuses, nothing. Often, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. nothing. You know, I, I was lucky. I was finding Jean. I was just ecstatic when I found Jean, and but there was no no Bettys, no Elizabeths, no Betsy, no you know, no corruption of Betty that I could find. <sighs> like I say, it, it's been it was it was a, an interesting search to say the least. Then there's the Edwards family, and I did find them. And again, the fabric and the handwriting are kind of a clue that they're, they might be connected. And if you look at their two Edwards ones and then look at the Aunt Eunice, yes, Aunt Eunice, the handwriting looks to be, to me, it looks to be very similar. And the fact that it's done in black, the stitching is very similar leads me to think that maybe Aunt Eunice was a, a member of the family, but I couldn't prove that. Um, I used historic newspapers, and I, I'd found Irene in the historic newspapers. And she was divorced when she was nine years old, and then she was divorced again when she was 14. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then in, in 1932, uh, she was working for a newspaper in another town. And she, she went to cover some kind of a union riot, uh, demonstration, and somebody pushed her. 
and she fell down and she was hurt. And she was able to sue them. <laughs> but whether that's this Irene or not, I don't know. Because obviously she probably wasn't married at nine or at 14 <laughs> to be divorced. And how did she get the Edwards last name? You know, did, 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 was that a married name or her single name or was she a child of one of these people? I, I don't know. So newspapers can be really fun because you can find a lot of interesting things. But you can't always make the connections. They don't tell you, oh, that's Mary Jo's son. You know, <laughs> okay, thank you. But they don't always give you. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Could some of these names that you can't find anything about, could they be the children that were put on trains and shipped out, the orphan, the orphan trains? Maybe. I don't know. Um, the, the, the quilt is pretty much the 30s. And that's, okay. that's a bit of a, a, a span yeah. that would be, you know, probably 50, 60 years from the orphan trains. So my, my guess would be no. But I don't know where all these people came from in Texas, you know. Uh -huh. There's only, there, a few of them show up in the book and they give a little bit of history. They, but they don't, nobody ever mentions the orphan train that I saw. And uh, they seem to have come as family units, the, the names that I did find. Of course, it could be anything. You know, we, we don't have any clue, and we have no way to, to figure it out uh, because we don't have enough information. All we have is Aunt Eunice. <laughs> she doesn't show up anywhere. But our big coup of the whole research project. Oh. <laughs> what do you do with that, ladies? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Whose mother? <laughs> And 1932, well, okay, thank you very much. Okay, but I'm sure she probably, or maybe Una. Una was, is out there too. But then, then there's Julia Marie, or Julia May, excuse me. And uh, we found her, and I believe it's in Find a Grave. And it's one of those really common names, that Smith name, you know, and you, you, you cringe when every time you, do, you start looking at it because it's, oh, another Smith. But this time, she showed up in Find a Grave with an obituary and a photograph. So this is Julia May. However, we still don't know why they all put their names on those blocks. So, happy Halloween. <laughs> Check out your cemetery. Yes. Thank you. I have a question about, uh, these, these were found at a, a sale at one of the- Antique sale. Homes. Mm -hmm. And did anybody ask if there were any last names Nell asked that question. When, when uh, Helen gave her the quilt, she said, well, gee, got to get some background. And so she asked her, you know, well, where, did you, where did you buy it? Well, I bought it at Horton Plaza. Okay. Do you know who put it in the sale? No, I don't know who put it in the sale. None of the names match anybody at Horton Plaza. So today, with the Albertsons and groceries, I've been making a list and getting everything in my resume down to almost nothing and saving, you know, adding things to the list and the list and the list. And I had a 10% off list. 15 of them. Okay. And so we have those, and then we have the book from, from Johnson County. So come take a look. He has the about 15 years of Johnson County, Texas 